it's the end of the world as we know it, and also close to the end of the season. CW's Charmed, episodes 19, 20, and 21, review and breakdown. Hey y'all, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here, and oh my gosh, I was so sick. Oh my gosh, I was so sick. I honestly thought maybe I had the Harbinger disease, that black ooze on the plague of humanity. That's what it felt like. Oh my gosh. But I'm back, and I want to catch up with all of you on Charmed episode 19, 20, and 21. So that's what we're doing, a mega review and breakdown. Okay, maybe not that mega because I'm going to try to condense this. Uh, as we go towards the end of the season of Charmed, CW's Charmed, the first season of the reboot, and boy, has it been a ride. Okay, so we're gonna do it a little bit differently because I have to do three episodes in one. So what we're gonna do is first I'm going to give my overall thoughts of the last three episodes. So the overall thoughts, as in what I thought about the overall episodes, because these episodes in particular all kind of happened back to back to back, like everything happened very quickly. So I wanna give my overall thoughts of that. Then I wanna go through each episode's major happening. So the major, major happening. So instead of like a play-by-play -play of each episode, I wanna do the major happenings and conclusions that happen in each episode, which is kind of what I already do, but it's going to be three episodes. And then my thoughts on each of those major happenings. Then of course I want to do my ship talk because oh my gosh, ship talk y'all. So much has happened when it comes to the ships of this show, so we have to talk about it. And then finally, I want to do predictions because we're going towards the end of the season after this. It's going to be the season finale and there's so many shakeups happening on and off screen and I think we have to get into it. I want to, to kind of scratch the surface a little bit with what we've seen so far in the last three episodes of predictions and then for my final uh, one for the season, I, I really want to dive into that. But for this one in particular, let's give some predictions of what we think the season finale is going to look like. Okay, so overall with these last three episodes, things have been moving at a breakneck speed. Like, oh my gosh. I feel like although every a lot of stuff was built upon throughout the season in a way, for whatever reason, these last three episodes felt like so much stuff was like, I don't want to say crammed in because some of these things were already being built upon, but like the climax of them or the anti-climax in some cases were just like, oh my gosh, didn't think that was going to happen this episode or didn't think this was going to go down in this episode and it totally did and then they moved on to the next thing. So yeah, a lot of stuff happened. There were a lot of revelations to a certain degree and in a way, some of this stuff was a little predictable i think some of the things a lot of us had already been guessing was going to happen did happen and so and not necessarily that's not necessarily a bad thing it just was like oh so they didn't like try something different they kind of went with what we figured they would go with so some stuff was predictable some stuff was a little too coincidental for me a little too neatly packaged or presented and yeah i get it they're in kind of a small town in cases but yeah just just certain things were like, okay, now he works at the house. What? You know, like a lot of stuff was very coincidental. What I see how, you know, you gotta, you gotta move the plot along. So you gotta have things happen the way they happen. So it can feel a little contrived. So some stuff was like that. But overall, there were a lot of major things and a very high body count. Oh my gosh. Like people are dying right now on this show and that was kind of you know surprising for a season one right you don't normally get that unless you know there's some big changes which actually there are right but yeah high body count going on here so episode 19 source material Parker's mother is killed and this pushes him to the dark side of his father and his newly resurrected brother this felt a little easy. This was one of those things where it was just kind of like, okay, that's a little contrived. I mean, one, I'm a little sad that his mom died. I think, um, you know, deaths happened. She was one of the first of the body count. And I just felt like there was more they could, that could have been done with this character who has gone through so many things of, you know, having been married to a major demon and coming out of it for being stronger and caring about her son. And, you know, it was... 
of course, emotionally turmoil for for Parker, but I feel like the ramifications of that for like where Macy works and stuff like that. I feel I felt like there would be more vibrations of that, more rippling of effects. Like who's in charge now? Things of that nature, and so. I don't know if they thought it through too much, except for the, you know, I'm not going to say they didn't think it through. What I'm going to say is, I think they, it was kind of in their mind, a narrow view of let's do this so that Parker, we can get Parker to kind of go over to the dark side and bring his brother back who can conveniently shapeshift into people. And Parker doesn't even think twice about maybe there's a shapeshifter, okay? But they don't think of the fact of, what that character, Parker's mom, is also connected to in terms of, like, where Macy works and her expertise. And she could have been something of a mentor to Macy in many cases. And I felt like it was... I, I did not care for killing her off necessarily. Maybe she could have been put in a coma or something like that. I don't know. So, yeah, that happened. And I felt like it was a little convenient in a way. I felt like Parker, yes, he's kind of a lost soul. He just lost his mom. So I can understand the turmoil he was going through with that. But the idea that he could kind of easily believe that Maggie, who has up to this point been so much there for him, would just kind of pull away like, you're scared of me, aren't you? And it's just like, now I have nothing. So now I'll just go back to my dad. I'll just be like the ender of, brain, of like end days. Okay. Fiona unhinged and Tessa is killed. I kind of figured Tessa was a red shirt. I said this, right? I said she was a total red shirt. I said she... I actually guessed it in my last video, didn't I? I was like, she's going to die because you can't kill off Harry. So you need some kind of death to occur. You need a few deaths. So it has to be kind of the low hanging fruit. And she was definitely a casualty of that introduced, sort of liked, but not sort of like attached at all because she came in towards the end of the season. And yeah, she totally got killed very quickly, I might add. This is what I'm talking about, the breakneck speed of which things are happening. Uh, yeah, she just kind of went down. For someone who knows a whole bunch of stuff to just kind of like take one blast and that's it, it was kind of anticlimactic. Not saying I needed a long death with her, but it was also kind of like, wow, that was that was quick for, for someone who's such an experienced white lighter to not put up a shield or anything, all right? So that happened. And then with Fiona being unhinged, we find out that Fiona wants to get uh, the dagger uh, because she's a source as well. And it's like, and we also find out that the source of major raw power is the same source for both demons and witches, which is awesome. And I think that was a revelation I really did appreciate because as I have been saying throughout, you know, since I started my recaps, I said, I was like, I feel like when it comes to demons and witches, that there's a thin line and that it's not automatic that demons are inherently evil. So I think this pretty much drives home the idea that if both of these, you know, sides can get the power from the same source, then it's a matter of nature versus you know, it's a matter of nurture versus nature more so than, okay, this side is inherently evil, this side is inherently good, because they both have the same power source. It's just a matter of how you wield it, right? So I appreciated that. But Fiona's, man, her motivation, this idea of, oh my gosh, everyone's been using me all this time, so I just want to, like, get rid of magic completely, Man, what a letdown, right? I was ready for her to be like this wannabe, like warrior, witch queen who just wants to like take all the power and basically do what she wants for once in her life or something. And it's just kind of this, she's got a death wish. She's basically someone with a death wish who's kind of gone through trauma and doesn't know how to process that. So she just wants to get rid of everything. And when you have a motivation like that for so-called big bad, it kind of falls flat, doesn't it? And uh, so I was a little disappointed. I was a little disappointed because I, I mean, the actress is phenomenal for one, I thought. And that's why I was a little bit disappointed because I'm like, there could have been so much more done with the idea of what her motivations were. And they went with this. And so, uh, yeah, her being unhinged and kind of crazy, I thought it could have been done with more something more productive than simply I want to get rid of all magic. I don't know if she was thinking this through. I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah. But Harry's back. 
yeah, Harry got freed, which was great, you know, broke the collar from around him, and he got his powers back, because she didn't really control his powers, his powers was taken, you know, it was explained, okay, so he has his powers back, but now he's a white lighter that doesn't have any, you know, obligation to anyone, except, of course, his de facto obligation to the Charmed Ones, so that was good, that was good development. Episode 20, Ambush. All the elders are dead except one, Charity. Man, that was quick, wasn't it? I mean, wow, they went down easy. And, you know, it's a little weird considering that they're supposed to be like the great sages and the elders. And you would think that means they're super friggin' powerful. And yet, I mean, I get it. Hunter was like, you know harped up on like major power because he got an upgrade of some sort and everything but still you would think that they'd put up more of a fight and they were kind of taken out like it was some horror picture and he was like a slasher from scream or something and i was just like this is kind of anti-climatic right like these are supposed to be like some of the most powerful witches in the universe right and they just kind of fell and to the point where the charm ones had to protect them, like, I'm thinking the main one, the main, the last elder before Charity was, like, this super powerful one who was gonna be like, let me show you why I'm the leader type of deal. And she just went down with the dagger. And I was like, what? Like, doesn't seem like it was much to protect here if that's all they had. I didn't get it. It just, it was a little weird. It was a little quick. And a little, little, little too easy, to be honest. With that said, it was definitely a game changer, right? I mean, what's good? All the elders are dead except one charity who's, like, not, you know, not a good fit to lead, of course. Charity. So, I mean, what does that mean, right? That kind of leaves the most powerful witches being... Well, we already knew they were the most powerful, but the charmed ones, right? But it was kind of like, man, you thought these elders... I can't get over how quickly they all went down. And why was there only, like, so many of them? This huge universe of witches and stuff. And that's all you got is this number, and they're not even, like, that cool and powerful? Macy's dark side emerges even more, and Marisol gives them tools and gifts. I thoroughly enjoyed Dark Macy. I thought, honestly, uh, I felt like she was kind of saying some truth bombs that weren't exactly totally lies when it came to the idea of her kind of being the one doing the heavy lifting a lot of time. That's not to say Maggie and Mel, or that I think Maggie and Mel are like useless or anything like that. But let's be real here. Macy has done a lot of the discoveries and a lot of the major you know, power plays, not when they're, like, fighting, because she's never allowed to really fight, she just throws vases and chairs, but when it comes to, like, discovering stuff and things of that nature, Macy has been the major one. Mel sort of, you know, discovered a lot of stuff, especially when she was working with the Circana, but other than that, uh, it's, you know, Maggie's been very preoccupied with Parker and stuff like that, so it was kind of funny that Macy comes in, and she's, like, done a complete 180, like, about face of a, in a different direction, and she's just like, well, why don't y'all go do something useful, because I've been the only one discovering things, and I'm kind of like, well, she's kind of saying it mean, but she's not really wrong, though. Marisol also gave uh, two of the, the sisters uh, gifts, and uh, that was interesting. Um, I thought the staff was cool for Maggie because of the idea of, let's give her a power. You know, I like her empath power. I think it's very useful, but it's not like, you know, combat fighting. But then again, like, this whole emphasis on them fighting, I kind of like it, but sometimes I'm kind of like, the whole point of them being witches is the fact that they don't necessarily need to do like, physical kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer fighting, right? So, I mean, it's cool that they added that element, but sometimes I think it gets depended on a little more than the magic at times, which is weird to say, I know. So, I mean, I appreciate the staff. I think it's cool. All right. And, uh, you know, Mel's tool was also cool. The idea that she can, like, move her body quicker and stuff to fight, uh, you know, the baddies. I think, that's fine too. That works. Uh, but once again, I think there's a little too much of an emphasis on this idea of physical fighting, which seems a little weird when you have magic. So, and, uh, Macy didn't get a gift. She didn't get a tool. Her mom told her that her gift was the world. So yeah. Yeah. So 
I mean, it's true, but it would have been cool that she got a gift more than just a reference to what she's always had, which was from her dad, uh, the pendant. Uh, so, yeah, that was all right. Lucy is still under Alistar's uh, compulsion. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to add that in because, oh my gosh, we finally saw Lucy, which is one of my fave characters, and she's still just a pawn and a tool, and everyone else knows about their magic. They find out that Lucy is under compulsion, and instead of telling her, like, hey, can we sit down? Can we let you know what's good? Because you're kind of a pawn in this game of demons and witches. They don't. <laughs> they just kind of thwart, like, Hunter, and then go away and let Lucy continue to party. And it's like, Maggie, why don't you tell everyone? Everyone else knows about you guys, it seems, except the person who really should know about you because of the fact that she is literally being used. <laughs> like, you don't think it's, you don't think this is the time to let her know? Lucy kind of does this Valley Girl California thing or whatever, but she's actually a very cool character, in my opinion. And she has a certain way about her that is somewhat smart and knowledgeable, even if it's under this facade of shallowness. So I don't, I think it's a little weird that they've kept her out of the loop for so long. I thought by now she would have been let in, especially when Maggie found out one of her close friends was being used. Why not tell her at this moment? So that was kind of weird, you know, just okay also within that we got another body count which was hunter this time and i'm kind of sad about that he as one of the baddies of the season i actually really enjoyed and i didn't want him to die i wasn't actually honestly in that scene i wasn't sure that he did die i thought he just kind of vaporized off so it was a little weird i mean because in the next episode as i'm going to talk about they referenced that he died so it was kind of like what like that's it Episode 21, Red Rain. The harbinger plague on humanity and all heck breaks loose and Galvin sacrifices himself. Yeah, that plague was uh, pretty interesting. I mean, we find out that it was inside of Hunter and when he died, that kind of unleashed it, I guess. That was why he was able to have the, the upgrade. And so, yeah, that happened so quickly. And so stuff went down and people are oozing and it was very disgusting. Uh, green ooze. That was, that's not good. People are gonna be feeling the ramifications of that later. Um, and then Galvin sacrifices himself. He does a ritual because, yeah, I get it. He's from a family of shamans, but yeah, like, suddenly he has the power to perform that? All right, sure, fine. We needed that moment, I guess. I'll talk a little bit more about all that stuff with ship talk when it comes to her and Macy and Galvin. But yeah, he sacrificed himself, which was a very noble act. I mean, up to this point, I feel like he had been very inconsistent, to be honest with you. One minute, it's like, please leave me alone. The next minute is, I want to help with the burden. I'm ready to give my life. Yeah, so that happened and it was an emotional moment and it was great that he was able to help out in the hospital conveniently they called him because i guess he's the one guy who does that kind of work so they have him in the hospital now one of those very convenient moments so yeah that went down and it was it was i like apocalyptic stuff like that so it was kind of cool to see it but once again it was like this breakneck speed of it all happening and kind of getting resolved in one episode macy becomes the holder of the source of like all power Okay, so this was the predictable part. We kind of figured this was going to happen. I'm not mad that it happened. I am actually am glad that it was realized because I have been complaining about, you know, Macy not being allowed to kind of have full to total power that we know she has the potential of. But that was more so on the potential of her own base powers. So giving her the source is, I mean, it works, but we kind of saw it coming. That's fine. But then... Okay, so she had already earlier in the last episode taken away Fiona's uh, mortality, immortality. And, uh, yeah, so Fiona kind of died so anticlimactically. Like, wow, so anticlimactic. It was just kind of like, now she's dead. She wanted to die, and now she's dead. And it was kind of like, what, what? This whole season we had been building up to this powerful woman, and that's how she goes out? She goes out like that? Okay, and then Macy basically with a flick of her wrist gets rid of Alistar, which was also like, what? 
Like, this big baddie demon who's been around for eons and stuff just kind of goes. Like, I get it. Macy's, like, super powerful and everything. But couldn't they have let him get away for another day or something? Like, he's he was actually an interesting demonic character. And I felt like there was, just like with Hunter, there was things that could have been done with him. And it was just kind of like, yeah, he's dead now, too, with just a flick of my wrist. Wait a minute. Like, these were the baddies that we had been building up to for, like, like all season come on that was like come on that was anticlimactic so then it leaves this question of well now who is the baddie what's going on what's the plot line now i guess of course the predictable thing is power corrupt so it's probably going to be macy that stuff goes down with her okay cool whatever but i think there was a little bit more potential there and then the whole thing with uh Parker, who basically just looked like a My Chemical Romance reject, uh, you know, so emo. And I'm like, man, you think when people go total evil, they get kind of cool. I mean, Macy looks cool when she goes evil. You know, even like Charity had the pop collar thing going on. And even Galvin when he was the demon. And then Parker just looks so sick. They made him look so sick. And I was like, man, for someone who's like powerful demon... Why is his hair so limp? I don't... (laughs) But, yeah, that was anticlimactic, too. And, I, yeah, I mean... The way they were looking at Macy was funny, though. Like, they were just like, oh, my gosh, what does this mean? Because they were already kind of nervous around her, right? So now she's, like, the holder of all power. And so uh, there's that. And so, yeah. So the question with all of this, you know, as these three episodes went, is where is all of this going, right? Um... I, like I said, a lot of stuff was happening at very breakneck speed, and I think part of this, if you don't already know, is that they're changing showrunners. They're kind of sort of changing the direction of the show, which is honestly probably for the best to a certain degree. I don't think they're going to do a total 180 where they're throwing everything away. I think they know some stuff really worked and some things people really enjoyed, so I think they might hone in on that a bit more, maybe the monsters of the week type stuff, and, you know, there's some, there's a sea change going on, and you can see this happening in the last two to three episodes, just the way stuff was getting altered. I mean, all the elders getting killed, that's a total game changer. What does that mean? Wow, that's never happened, and so... You can see it happening. So I'm really curious as to where all of this is going to because you get rid of some some of the major baddies who in any other show probably would be baddies for the next two to three years of the show in a way. And so now we don't got a major baddie. So it's like, where's that going to go? And so it was very interesting, very breakneck speed. And I think part of that was because of the fact of the changes that are happening, uh, you know, with the direction of the narrative. So, um, I'm not against it or for it at this point. I'm just like, wow, a lot of this stuff went down real quickly and I thought it'd be drawn out a little bit longer. Harry and Charity. All right, so that's really done because she's really dead this time. Um, before it was like she was going to Tartarus. And we kind of are getting this sense that Tartarus, people don't stay there. They don't got the best security in Tartarus because Hunter was able to get out. And why was Charity having to go in that sparkly outfit just to go get him? I was a little confused on that. Like, they did they ever explain why it was a sparkly outfit that she had to, like she was going to the disco? to just go get this guy anyway so um yeah hunter comes out and uh yeah so charity's dead and so before she died she told harry that she had always loved him harry did not say anything to her i think that's very telling because he could have been like i've always loved you too no matter what i mean and we did see that there was remorse but he was pretty much done with her and you could tell he was just kind of like i'm good and so uh that's really done and i don't know if they're gonna have it so harry kind of mourns that because i feel like maybe he's had a chance to although a lot of stuff happened in the midst of all those revelations that maybe he does still need a little bit of time but yeah that's really done nico and mel all right so Jada's just not around anymore, and that's probably for the best because they really honed in for the last three episodes how much Mel still has residual, very much ignited 
feelings for Nico very much there. And Nico does as well. But of course, there's the conflict right now. Nico knows about the magic. She figured that out because she's a detective. And so Mel let her in on it. Uh, still no one can tell Lucy who's actually being used, but okay. Uh, so Nico knows, but then there's the little issue of the fact that Mel basically made the choice for Nico by changing her memories. And we find out that Nico had like a emotional mental breakdown because of the conflict in her brain. All of this, of course, which could have been uh, avoid it had Charity let them know that there was a different kind of spell they could have done for Nico, which is really messed up. But Mel still made the choice to, instead of allowing Nico to kind of make her own decision, and we're talking about choice of all things these days, uh, to basically decide whether or not she wanted to keep with the danger or not, right? And so what we get is this conflict of Nico still having feelings for Mel because they, that never really totally went away, but now also dealing with the fact that Mel made this decision for them. So right now they're kind of at odds. Nico almost had an aneurysm because of the conflict in her brain because Mel telling her the truth conflicted with the spell that was on, which was really messy. And it might be hard for them to go back from this, right? Come back from this. And I think they will uh, because I think the writers definitely made a play to let us know that this is a very significant relationship. We had Jada for a bit. Maybe Jada may come back around. I doubt it. They did her character a total 180 when it came to it. And maybe that was because they were also, you know, making changes and decided she didn't fit the narrative. I don't know. But it's very much Nico and Mel who are kind of the main crux for Mel's like romantic life although it may take some time for Nico to come back around to the idea of wanting to be with Mel again also she's supposed to get married soon so who knows uh but yeah that was very much emphasized these last couple of episodes and in my opinion I think they definitely have chemistry I I don't actively ship them but I'm not against them as a relationship so if they build it back up, because I do think Mel needs to earn Nico's trust again, then I think it could work. But yeah, hopefully it doesn't get drawn out too long, but I definitely think Nico has to come to trust Mel again. Parker and Maggie. All right, so at the end of this last episode, he basically told Maggie to stay away from him because he's not sure what he'll do with his demon side. All right, listen here. All right, so... Macy has been dealing with her demon side and maybe because she's a witch that she's able to be a little bit more strong about it and really working hard to control it. I don't know. I feel like I get it. You know, it makes Parker physically ill, which they haven't really totally explained because I can't imagine he's the only person in the history of existence who was also human and demon you know, that there wasn't anybody else who ever hooked up with a demon before. Like, I just find it hard to believe. I feel like maybe he should put out a filler to see if there's someone else, like a, an anonymous group or something, that maybe he could ask someone else what they went through. I don't know. But he's still conflicted with this. And we've been dealing with this conflict all season. There comes a point where you have to either crap or get off the pot with this. Because... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Macy could probably come up with some serum, the last serum that she that his mother was trying to do. Fine. So let's do that. Like, why is he totally just like, I don't know anymore? As though, like, his mother's work can't be replicated. I just feel like it's a little contrived to keep this going. I think with this relationship, uh, once it's one of those relationships where I'm not against them. I... I think these characters have a lot of chemistry. I think they work. I think the problem that they have had with this particular ship is they tried to build it up to be epic way too early. You know, uh, I get it, young love and all of that, but I don't think they built it up enough to be having it so they say I love you every other 30 minutes. And I'm supposed to really believe that this is enough where Maggie's ready to like sacrifice her life and all this other stuff, and he is too, and da 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 And I'm just like... Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's epic, but I think it's a little too quickly done for these characters. And I think they tried to make something that they needed to maybe build up a little longer, maybe a season or two to get to that particular point. And because of that, I think it rings a little hollow. And because of that, I think this this continued conflict of his demon side, it's going to get old really quick. Or for me, it's gotten old. And so I'm not as invested to keep going along with this to the point where I don't even know if... I mean, I like Parker as a character. I want him to stay around, actually. I just don't know if I want him to stay around as her boyfriend. 
So I think that's something they're going to have to deal with because this this circle this circling is it's getting old here. Galvin and Macy. So Galvin died a hero, you know, and I I will admit um in the last maybe 2 to 3 episodes I had come to appreciate him a little bit more as a character. But let me say this, in other episodes when the emphasis hasn't been on his romance, quote unquote, with Macy, I have liked his character. I have said it before. They work better as friends. They work better as him being some character she goes to or works with occasionally and he's a confidant to her. They work better that way. And the romance doesn't work because for whatever reason, he just comes off like a really crappy boyfriend to her. Like, and she's always having to somehow make amends to him. Like she's done something wrong as he's, as though he's been wrong this whole time in their relationship. And that's not been the case. And so it doesn't work romantically for me, but as friends, I think they work really, they work really well. I, I like Galvin as a character. He's actually very capable, you know, like the whole thing with the harbinger and stuff. He was very useful. It's convenient that he was working in the hospital. It works, you know, to have it so that these characters have friends in the town that aren't all romantic, right? And so I think they need to go that route with this relationship, but um, he died, uh, and it looks like Macy in her power trip brought him back. But we all know, we all know that there are repercussions when it comes to bringing people back from the dead. Uh, Macy's dealt with that. We see she's the, she's a result of that. And, um, he's fully human though. So it's kind of like, I'm pretty sure there's going to be even worse ramifications and I don't think it's going to be able to hold true. So the question then is, what do you do with that? And, um, yeah, this relationship, I think he redeemed himself to me in my eyes with what he decided to do because he has been that kind of character to want to do the noble thing. I just don't think it works for Macy as a relationship. And so I think the question is, is she going to be allowed to finally move on from this guy when all the dust settles? And I really hope they let her because I, this relationship didn't do her any favors in terms of confidence or emotional stability or even like a good plot line. So yeah, Macy and Harry, y'all, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They they're lovely. They're they're amazing. Such great chemistry. And I loved that in the last three episodes, we got them working together more often and just the looks and she can read Demon and he's all surprised. And oh my gosh, that moment where she was casting the spell on Fiona and he was like, come back to me. I was like, what? Whoa, who says that? <laughs> come on, come on. Moments, y'all, which have been riddled throughout this whole season. We've gotten moments. Maybe not overtly straight up romantic, but there have been moments that really show that these two characters totally should be romantically involved and all the ramifications of that. Could you imagine if there was a pregnancy plot line with the two of them? Right? Like, not only is she a witch, but she's also part demon and he's a white lighter and former human. I mean, wow, that baby could be, like, considered, like, maybe he is part, he or she is part of a prophecy of end days with a baby like that coming into the world. There's so much they could do with the union of these characters, especially with Harry no longer being, like, under anybody's thumb when it comes to his own powers that he has. So, I, I just saw it. I, I think... I'm still rooting for them. I think the the writers would be very smart to go the route of the two of them because the thing is, as I have said, Mel and Nico are going to probably be a push and pull relationship uh, if they continue with that, right? And then I think the issue with Maggie is that because she was the younger character, I think they went the wrong route of tying her so closely and trying to make some epic love story with a new with a guy character so quickly in the first season with her, when in reality, she should be the character that dates around so that we get new characters. So what that leaves is the character of Macy to have the epic love story with like an epic guy character. And who's a more epic guy character in their universe right now than a white lighter who has these powers to heal and all this other stuff, right? Right. So there's, you know, 
Um, I'm not gonna say he's he could be the angel to her Buffy because that's like one of my OTPs, but he very much can, you know, with all the power she has, with or without being a source, his own source of power and what that might mean and him connecting to other white lighters now. Maybe he might be in charge of white lighters. What's going to happen? There's so much potential for them as a power couple that it would be to me a waste not to explore that. So, uh, fingers crossed, but I really enjoyed the Macy and Harry moments that we did get. All right, so my predictions are <laughs> Macy's going to be corrupted by the power. I think they're going to divide the power amongst the three because you don't got no elders no more. Someone's got to lead. Why not, like, the most powerful witches? Now, what is that going to mean, though, if they lead? Like, this may be where they're going in terms of making it more so a show where each week there's a new, like, baddie to deal with that builds up to a bigger arc. Because if they are the people that everyone goes to for problems and things, that's going to mean they're going to have to do stuff like that on a regular basis. Kind of like Buffy, but more so like, you know, magic crime fighters in a way of the of the magical world. And I think this is a good direction for them. And ba basically, they'll also have more powers. So I think this will be really good uh, if they go this direction of them splitting the powers off and and, and amongst the three of them because it, it reinforces the power of three, of course. And so I think that will work. And that's my prediction in terms of them. My prediction for the relationships, uh, I think uh, Charity's done, so Harry's on the market again. I I think they might try with the Maggie and Parker thing going into the new season, but I think they'd probably be smarter to let that go for a while and maybe let her date around. She's young. Let her date around. Let us get a new guy every couple of weeks and see where that happens. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of my main thing with the ships. And I think, I think we're going into a different direction. So I think in terms of a new baddie, we may not know who the new baddie is until season two. I think if anything, they're going to try to tie this up. And the last bit to tie up is Macy needing to kind of give up some of that source power. So that is what they're going to have to do. Man, has this season felt long. Wow. I mean, I feel like the show's been on for a couple of years, and it's, and I keep I keep having to remind myself, this is only season one, because so much has happened. Great stuff, but some stuff has been uneven, but that's okay. It's the first season. And, um, yeah, so those are my predictions. So let me know what you think. <laughs> all right, so I went through three episodes and ship talk and all of that great stuff. Y'all, let me know what you're thinking. I always enjoy talking charmed and witches and magic and supernatural stuff with you and I enjoy doing this. I enjoy that you enjoy my recaps and reviews and breakdowns and I really care about you all in terms of your opinions and your support and I thank you for that and let me know what you're thinking. Comment down below. What are your predictions? Who are you shipping? What do you think about this potential new direction that the show's going in? I want to know your thoughts. Comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking and also be sure to subscribe so that you're the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror, dark fantasy, and dark superhero. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together. <laughs>